For the first time, we have finally gotten to see Shigaraki's backstory. What a powerful chapter. There's a lot to be gained from this chapter, and there's a lot that sets up for the end game of the story. Because once again, as a reminder, Shigaraki is the final villain. He will be the final villain. He has always been the nemesis to Izuku. And seeing his backstory and his goal, it may not seem like anything fancy, but it does have a lot of meaning, which I'm going to get into. So, what, before I get into Shigaraki and explain his backstory, let's look at Izuku, what he stands for, to kind of pair it up to Shigaraki. Izuku is an individual that wants to be the number one hero for he can save people. That's his number one goal. He wants to save people. He wants to just be a hero through and through. That's it. He just wants to save people, and that's it. He doesn't want nothing else out of it. He may want to be the number one hero, but he wants to do that because he wants to be able to save people. Okay. That is Izuku's goal. And when you really think about Izuku's goal, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing entirely original. It's nothing that blows anyone's minds. I mean, we've seen his, his development and how much struggling he's had to go through just to get where he's at. But overall, his objective, his goal, is very simplistic. He wants to save people. Shigaraki has always been the exact opposite. Anytime Izuku is developing in one direction, Shigaraki is developing in the other direction. He's always been the nemesis. And seeing his objective of wanting to destroy everything, everything, is the exact opposite of what Izuku wants. It's a perfect yin and yang situation. You can't have one without the other. Destruction, creation. There you go. And so, since Izuku is someone that wants to save, Shigaraki is someone that wants to destroy. And that's the cool thing about this. Like I said, it's simplistic, but there's a lot behind it that really drives that motivation. And one thing I do want to mention is that Horikoshi, it's very clear, going into this chapter, he did not want to justify Shigaraki. He didn't want the readers to automatically side with Shigaraki and say... His motive is 100% relatable. I see why he's like this. He's, you know, honestly, he's doing bad things for good intentions or whatever. You know, that that's kind of what many would assume. But that's not the case here. It's obvious now after this chapter, Shigaraki finally revealed his heart. He finally revealed his true thoughts, his motives to his underlings, to everyone that's around him, his family in a way. He revealed how he truly feels. Everyone there, Toga, twice... Uh, Mr. Compress, Dobby, all of them, Spinner, they all got to hear the true motive of Shigaraki. Sh Shigaraki threw away the mask. He threw away the games. He, in that moment, he became his true self. And that is why you saw all the reactions, everybody's reactions. You saw Toga have a question mark. You saw twice, like, huh. And then you saw Mr. Compress in shock. You saw Spinner just wide-eyed and when you look at all of the reactions it makes sense because this is the first time that they've really ever gotten to see Shigaraki probably really talk about himself talk about his past it's probably not something he's really ever got down to talk about and now seeing that interaction they see who they're truly working for they're no longer working for someone that is obviously following Stain's ideology that's not it Shigaraki finally creeped out of the shadows and is like I'm not living under Stain's name anymore. I'm not living under his name. I'm not using his ideology to further myself. I will further myself because of my own goals, and you will know my goals, and if you want to work with me, you'll work with me. That's pretty much what he said, and that is why this is very significant for his character. He just developed in a way to where he's not lying, but number two, let's look at why he wants to shatter the world. Now, like I said, at first glance, it's simple because Destroying the world, it's a simple thing that villains do. But why is that? Why does he want to do it? Well, his family is a big thing, his past. He lost all of his family. And through the brief little fragmented flashback, we get some pieces. Not the full picture, and not clear enough to get the full context of the story, but there is a little bit of pieces to kind of grasp some of the events that took place. And so I'm going to kind of break them down. So, to begin the flashbacks, like the fragmented memories, you see a puppy, a dog. And you could assume that this puppy slash dog was most likely Shigaraki's 
and he really cherished his puppy. And looking at his overall age, his height and all that, he was probably at the age to when his quirk finally activated. And most likely a boy his age, you know, he most likely was happy, and he wanted to play with the puppy. He's like, oh, cute puppy, and he wanted to play with the puppy, pet it or whatever. And as we know, Shigaraki's quirk, it activates thanks to his fingers, all five fingers wrapping up on someone. When it touches them, it starts to disintegrate them. And so, most likely, in that very moment, a very tragic moment, his quirk activated. It finally came and matured, and he disintegrated the puppy. Right after that, the next fragmented memory, you see destruction, like disintegrated mess on the ground, and when you see someone's legs running over. Now, we don't really know how much time frame has shifted from the dog scene to that, but if I had to assume if it's going in a proper order from one scene to the next, then most likely the dog was the dis disintegrated parts on the ground, the person running over carries over into the next picture where you see something else disintegrating, which most likely is a hand. You see a dude reaching down, you see the sleeve of like a suit or whatever, and a hand that looks like a hand disintegrating which basically represents that someone ran over to Shigaraki got disintegrated after the dog got disintegrated I and mean, you see in the background this little girl which you don't really know who this little girl is you don't know if this little girl is Shigaraki's sister or if it's a friend or just a random person it's not clarified at all but we do get to see a clear picture on the way the girl looks and when you see her Instantly in that moment, we don't know her fate. We don't know if she died because when you look at the hands, the individual hands that was displayed by the doctor, none of them are the size of that little girl's hands. None of them. So looking at that, that little girl most likely, if she is dead, she's not a part of those hands, which makes me believe that is not Shigaraki's family, which I want to get into all the hands and stuff in a second. But if that is, you know, someone that did get disintegrated, it's not Shigaraki's family. So it means that... The dog disintegrating to the person running over to the little girl, they might not have been Shigaraki's family. Maybe the little girl, but maybe the dude that ran over wasn't. Or the dude that did run over was, and the little girl wasn't. Whatever the case may be, the little girl is a big mystery. Carrying over into the next scene after that, you see... Um, like a person, the back of their head, you see they're looking away, and it looks like it's inside of a room. I'm assuming cooking or whatever. And then you see the eye look and all that. You see, like, I'm assuming the father looking at Shigaraki, and, like, basically he's like, you monster or whatever. And then the next scene, you see the arrow with blood on it. Now, I'm assuming the arrow is the... Uh, the weapon or tool that was used to wound Shigaraki because remember Shigaraki has a wound on his uh, his lips He has a wound right there And if you look at the panel you see how the arrow tip or whatever it has blood coming off of, Which most likely means that someone was using a weapon to keep Shigaraki back the question is why would Shigaraki Go after someone charge forward at someone even when he knew how his powers were slightly working unless he was just so distraught He's like why are you doing this and he's just in you know scared or whatever Maybe that's the question or the reason why behind it, but the point is, is that the memories are so fragmented, we don't really have a clear-cut answer. And when you look at the hands, they don't really match up to everything. They, at the very least, don't match up with the little girl. And if that is Shigaraki's sister, there's a potential possibility that Shigaraki's sister could be alive. Now, anyways, let's just say that is a possibility that's obviously going to be a critical part in the future of the story. The character, if Shigaraki's family in some case or shape or form is alive, that would mean that Shigaraki will eventually come in contact with her, which could maybe redeem him, or he might have her join him, or he might kill her. One or the other. Now, big part about this I do want to mention is the hands. The hands that the doctors displayed are, are very convenient. And what I mean by that is it's a little crucial detail that I think that Horikoshi is purposely doing here. And because of how fragmented the memories are, there's so many question marks about this. The doctor conveniently bringing in the hands, all the hands of Shigaraki's apparent victims, his family, is questionable. Because everything we know from Shigaraki's quirk, it disintegrates everything. Like, let's look at Overhaul. When Shigaraki grabbed Overhaul's arm or whatever, he started to disintegrate. His entire arm did, even his hand, and it had to be cut off. It basically meant in that moment that his hand would not be kept there. So everything we know from Shigaraki's quirk, there's no way that the hands would be 
intact. In fact, when you think about it, from the fragmented panels after the dog scene, and when you see the dude running over, and when you see the apparent disintegration of the hand slash arm, that once again goes to prove or show something against what the doctor gave to Shigaraki, all of those hands, is that Shigaraki's quirk disintegrates everything. And so for the hands to be miraculously okay doesn't make sense in that context. The only way that would make sense is that if All for One was there that moment to sever all the hands, or those hands are fake in some way, or there's more to this where Overhaul has manipulated Shigaraki to believe that that is his family, but it really isn't, it's someone else. There's just so many questions I have, but... It's obvious that from the fragmented memories, there's more to the story than lets on, and that most likely, all for one, knowing how he is as an individual, probably set up that that interaction to make Shigaraki do that, and might have somehow manipulated him to move against his will, or might have in some case, shape, or form, had it to where Shigaraki, you know, uh, just... He didn't do it, but then the memories got implanted to seem like he did, or he was given a quirk that he didn't know he had. I mean, there, there's a lot of variables here, but I just, I feel like the way the scene goes out of its way to show the hands are intact, and then we see a little girl, and then there's no little girl hands, but then you see also a hand get disintegrated. There's just, there's too many questions, too many questions about that that does not make sense. So that needs to be explained, and I feel like if more is found out, I think when Shigaraki eventually does maybe remember... He might set his eyes on All for One. Now, hear me out. Yes, All for One is his master. Okay. Yes, he has a connection. And I think at one point, if Shigaraki continues, there's no coming back. For instance, he's already pretty much at that point. There's no coming back to what's happened in his life. And so even if he found out the truth that he was manipulated, he probably still would say it's the Hero Society's fault for even allowing this to happen in the first place. So... In the grand scheme of things, Shigaraki is probably still too far gone to be saved, even if he found out the truth that he was being manipulated by All for One. But what would happen then? Let's say he does find out, and Shigaraki obviously does care about his family. He does. Because he's now using his hands that are on him as mementos to carry himself to move forward, his drive, his passion. But also, when he's talking about his family, you see these, you know, little panels focusing on the League of Villains. Spinner, Toga, Twice, you know, Mr. Compress, you know, we get to see all of them. And Shigaraki, it's obvious that he views them like family. He even says that he won't destroy the things they care about. Which means that he respects them enough, he cares about them enough, that he doesn't want to ruin what they want. So, I feel like Shigaraki, at this point, he views... Everyone that's a part of his group as family, and that's what he cares about. The only thing he cares about. And everything else, free game, destroy. Everything's gone. So yeah, I, I think because of everything, how far gone he is, even if he found out the truth, he wouldn't change. But I think he would probably try to kill all for one, and still stay a villain. And it would really fit in with Horikoshi's writing style. Hear me out. The reason why I think that is because, think about what fan that Horikoshi's up, like how much of a fan he is of a certain series. He's a fan of Star Wars. Now, if you know anything about Star Wars, you know about the Sith. And when it comes to the Sith, the Sith, when they're trying to get someone into the dark side, like they have a pupil, the pupil eventually rises up and takes down the Sith Lord, their master, their mentor. That's a big moment for a Sith to truly become a Sith. So I feel like how much of a fan Horikoshi is of Star Wars in general and how many references he's made to it, there's a possibility Shigaraki will eventually find out the truth and to finally concrete that he's better than all for one, he will take him out and end him and he will position himself as the king of the villains, basically. I feel like something like that will happen. It just, it makes sense from a storytelling perspective and how Horikoshi's setting this up. Which, by the way, I do want to mention also the little fragmented scenes when it shows that he wants to sh destroy everything. On the bottom left, you see a dude that's turned away, and at first glance, it looks like All for One. But then I was like, that doesn't actually look like All for One. And I'm just like, who does that look like? And it, I was just, it took me a moment. I was staring at it for a very long time. But the more and more I looked at that little picture on the bottom left, it looked like Destro. Does anyone else see that? Am I wrong there? If you if you could point out that maybe I'm, miss, I'm not seeing things right, but it looks like Destro. In this case, maybe Destro's alive. Which would really complicate this arc even more now. 
But okay, last few things to talk about before I wrap up this video. Johnny. Poor Johnny. Uh, Johnny is in a sad state. So it's confirmed now that the doctor didn't use the quirk to teleport all them. Like, he doesn't have it. It's actually Johnny. This little Nomu in, like, a jar or whatever by itself being able to use this quirk. And you see multiple dials, which is being twisted in the brain, which is, oh my god, it's just, it's grotesque, it's messed up, and the way he says Johnny, it's clear as day that Johnny is a child, and it fits with the theme of what the Nomus are, all these little kids, so that's probably the case here. And also, another thing too, is that at the end, Shigaraki he finally has to face G uh, Gagan and take him out. Gagan has to be taken out, and that's the only way the Doctor will fully follow Shigaraki and allow him to use everything he has to offer. So Shigaraki has to make Gagan submit. And will he submit is the question. Now another big thing too is the final panel, which shows the CEO and some blob on the ground. It's obvious the blob is Gagan. Garan is probably dead. It was obvious going in that he was probably going to die. And seeing that mess basically states that yes, he is dead. So, <sighs> he's such a good character. It's sad to see him go. I, I really wanted more Garan, but it looks like he's probably dead. But that's about it. I guess I'll end this video here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And I love you guys. Be safe. Chibi out.